there right over the right shoulder though a lot of height there to the swing and what about this Gary comes in there elbow against his right hip which is the best part. Yeah, you know, well, he's very much a proponent of uh, the, you know the Jimmy Ballard method. Look at that of, follow yeah, through. Look looks at like that. it hurts. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> 45. Just Johnny. like, oh, that hurts. Yeah, there's a lot of grimacing going but on. But you there. see how high the right shoulder is, folks, up against his chin. That produces a draw. You want to hit a draw? High right shoulder finish, higher than the left. It's not the only unorthodox swing from Western Pennsylvania, is it? Rocco from Greensburg, <laughs> just down the road from Latrobe, is Hero Arnold. Now Westwood for birdie at 11. Steady as she goes. That's a good par. par. That's a good par 11. Westwood remains one under back to nine. And the uh, birdie putt here for Tiger Woods and probably a little longer than what he was hoping to have. And he's certainly being very diligent about it. That's for sure. It's a tricky little putt, Roger. I've seen uh, a number of players putt from this position. They keep looking for the ball to go to the left, and uh, it's a very straight putt. Nothing you like worse than when you got a putter in your hand and you make five on a par five when you hit it in two. Just the way I've seen everybody miss it, Johnny. Wow, that is Fry City for him. I, I hated those more than anything. I'd rather shank it than three by a par five for a bar. Well, maybe not. Well, as long <laughs> as it's not OB or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you deserve it. I mean, the guy hit it with 300, what was it, Gary? 60. 360 drive and an iron, right? Perfect looking at Eagle. How'd you do? Par. He's going to go back and take another look at it, but uh, you know, it's amazing. Guys all see the same thing, Johnny. I've seen every player miss that putt to the right. Man. Head to 11. Hey, man, if for par, get his tee shot in the bunker. But, oh, he was looking at it like it was going to drop. No fair stepping. That was the early call by the Spaniard. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful scene there. I tell you, Rocco Media is dodging more bullets than Indiana Jones uh, with Tiger Woods. I mean, Tiger's <laughs> just helping him hole after hole. But he's right over his shoulder still. I know, but <laughs> Hunter Mahan in with that two under round at plus two. And now back to the mechanic. His nickname. He referred to his workmanlike swing, and uh, the mechanic heard something in the background. So yeah, that's probably somebody moving, but. He's going to step back. Europeans like those pink colors, don't they? Well, love white pants in Europe and pink clothes. He's got a Ferrari in the garage, too, Johnny. Yeah, the mechanic. Yeah. I don't know what, how much work he does on it by himself, but. Yeah. But there's the guy that leads the European order of merit. And who tied for eighth at the Masters uh, back in April in the first major of the year. So no surprise to see Miguel in the mix. And over at the 10th, Tiger off the tee. Again, the tee's up just a bit, 400 yards. Birdie hole. Okay, this one looks pretty good. We'll hang on down that right-hand side. You can almost tell by that body language that he's still mad about that par at nine. Well, he's thinking he's going to make four at, no, at nine and three at ten, and he's already squandered one of them. Davis Love now, Dottie. Well, the five iron in hand, the wind is in and from the right. Pretty good hole location to hit a hard cut into it. Hold it right into it. Just trying to cut now. The wind's got it moving left. His left wrist at impact just collapsed slightly, which kicked it left, and uh, he didn't hold on to it like he wanted. So with Love trailing by three and Rocco on top at three under, we go to Bob Costas for our Lincoln Financial NBC Sports Report. Welcome to the Lincoln Financial NBC Sports Report. Here's your host, Bob Costas. 
And the sports report is pretty much the midway through the third round golf report from the U.S. Open. Curtis Strange and Peter Jacobson back. Let's take a look at the highlights beginning with Tiger Woods and the first hole here at Torrey Pines has been nothing but a low light for him. Six, five, six, well, five as, over. As you see, Bob missing the fairway way left can only do this, but not a smart play. You have to lay up in the fairway. So he doubles the first hole. Now here he is, his second shot at the fourth. A short, short uh, par four, and just what he didn't want to do, missed his right. Now he's got to hack it out of the heavy rough, which is probably going to put some stress on his knee, so he's off to a tough start. And he bogeys the fourth, and now gets back on track with a long birdie putt at seven. Well, this is what he did on the backside yesterday. Finally hit some greens and made some 15, 20 footers and got on track. Stuart Appleby, this for par. Now this is what happens in the U.S. Open. You lose your concentration. Stuart misses that. He powers it by. Thinks he's got this one. And look out. Four putts for a double on the fifth. He is five over for the day. Lee Westwood now sits in second place. This is his second shot at 10. Just a pitch and wedge from probably 120 yards. Even part this time playing very well. He birdied the hole. He's two shots back of the leader, and this is the leader, Rocco Mediate, for birdie. Well, there's no secret. In the U.S. Open, you need to hit fairways greens and do just that. Make some nice putts. Birdie at two, another one at five. Five, a good par four back into the win. You know, I thought this would be his weak point, but so far he's doing this as well as anybody, making some putts. So Mediate at three under, Lee Westwood two back at one under, and a group including Tiger Woods and Davis Love the third, actually just the two of them, are even and three back. I think it's interesting to note that for many years, Rocco Mediate went to the long putter, and conventional thinking is when you use, use a long putter, it kind of teaches you just to rock your shoulders and let the putter do the work. And you can see by Rocco's stroke, he's, he's, he's putting beautifully. Well, he's also playing very well. It's, uh, seven of nine fairways, six of nine greens. He's actually hitting the ball better than anybody else in the field of the leaders that we have seen. Everybody playing a bit sloppy, but again, this golf course, as wind has come up, it's damp, it's cool. It's not easy at all, Bob. Nobody's having more fun than Rocco, too, I can guarantee. I saw him before he played, <laughs> and he's waving at people like yeah. this. Uh, he's having a great yeah. time, and attitude plays as much of this as hitting great shots. Here he is. This is his third shot at nine. Well, he's done exactly what he needed to do, driving the fairway, lay up perfectly right to his yardage, probably about 85 yards. From 105 here. Yeah. Just like in Tin Cup, by the way, Peter. An, eight, an 18, a, a right. par 5. Well, there's no water there. No there's water. no water that's to that's, suck that's the ball the back into. That's right. But I love, I love Rocco's setup. He makes the same tempo swing, whether it's a driver or a wedge. This is a real strong part of his game. Trying to pull it back. Here it comes. You know, the sun has not come out today, so there's a little bit of a heavy feel to the air, which is going to make the greens a little bit softer. And it's a very fair open. Everybody's talked about how fair the greens have been. Tiger on 10. This is his second shot from 133. Hit a three wood off the tee, laid up perfectly here. This is where he started. Getting it turned around yesterday when he made the turn. He's two over today, even for the championship, and at present three back of Rocco Mediate. As I said, the greens have not firmed up. The players are spinning some balls back like you saw right there, and but that's actually a very good leave. He can make that putt. He seems almost puzzled by what happened there. Well, the Tiger bunker. expects to make every shot. Let me put it that way. Now, here's a guy, Davis Love, who I think has a great chance to win this tournament. He's been hurt, hasn't been playing well. He's not comfortable being anything outside of the top Whoa! 10 of the world. <laughs> Nearly holding from there. So the tap in to save par from out of the bunker. I was ahead of myself, by the way, uh, on Mediate on the par five because it's the 18th. That's the par five over water like the That's final right. scene in Tin Cup. And we've played that hole many times in uh, when we played here at Torrey Pines and you can spin that ball back in the water with a wedge. You got to be careful. All right, Peter and Curtis will check back with you later. And that wraps up the Lincoln Financial Sports Report. I know that because I'm hearing the music. We will say goodbye <laughs> for now. We're this has been the Lincoln Financial NBC Sports Report.
Okay, shortly past five o'clock on the West Coast, there's that beautiful boat out there sporting the American flag on Flag Day, June 14th, along the cliffs of Torrey Pines and the South Course. First major championship here, U.S. Open at Torrey Pines, just the second U.S. Open in Southern California through the years. And up high up on those cliffs, you've got a bunch of golfers, Johnny, trying to stay in it. And we'll resume with the action at the ninth and the guy that leads everybody for the moment. And has a chance here uh, with this birdie opportunity to increase the lead. Not really a hard putt, Gary. I'm going to say it's in the 14 foot range, just a little bit down the hill and I think a little left hand break to it maybe. Yeah, there's just a little mark. It seems as though uh, players have been over reading the break. I was talking to him and he just loves this putter. I, I don't know what it is about it. I've never hit one with it. But. Uh, that one's not firm enough. It's gonna hold the line. Up to 13. And Jeff Ogilvy a chance for Eagle here. Starts it out to the right. This can be pretty good. Slow down. Cut. Jeff is one over par. Just earlier, this is Ernie Els third. He drove it into fairway bunker. You remember what Phil Mickelson did? Mm, I hate to tell you. Up lacks one bounce. Back down the hill. There's a lot of divots down there too, folks. You just praying now that you don't end up in one of those divots because they all collect about the same spot. Very dangerous indeed. Now his fourth. Remember he's pitching uphill about 25 feet. And this one will go back to him as well. You got two veterans, Bob, and Mickelson and Ells. Doesn't make sense. He finally got that fifth one on and this for a bogey. And it's over. There he goes to plus four. Over to ten. And Tiger. At even par. And a chance here to get back to one under. Well, what about this putt, guys? Well, we'll check this out here. Tiger's taking his time. Yeah, well, this, yeah, he should move a little bit to his left, I would think, early on. Looks like it might want to straighten a little bit in the area of the cup, but uh, I think overall it's a little right to left. Uh, the fringe is not an issue at all? No, it's kind of short there, so I don't really think that'll be much of an obstacle at all. That kind of putter, though, it's got a sharp back edge, and when you go back, if it hits that little tiny bit of half-inch rough, it could catch. So you got to be—he's making sure that doesn't happen. What you do is play it back in your stance, so the club comes up quicker. say there's a lot of magic going on with the Tiger so far but he's still in great shape. Well he can flip the switch like he did yesterday. Well he seems to be having even par so much on his mind every time he interviews he says I just want to get yep. it to even par. Well he's at even par right now and seems to be holding Pat. Back over to nine. And this was just a moment ago Stuart Appleby's birdie attempt just short of the green in two. Just like every other player has missed that putt to the right. Man, he's already what? What did that put him five or six over? Yeah, and now this four par. Oh, oh yeah. man. So a four putt from 15 feet at the fifth, and this will be a three putt from about five feet at the ninth. So we go back to 13. And Jeff Ogilvy for a birdie. He 
he's got the game for this type of situation. He plods along. Got a great control of his temper. And staring out into the distance with ocean in the background par 4 12th is Westwood one under. 476 yards today can play more than 500 but again one of those holes that's moved up some 28 yards and a good shot by Westwood T at 10 is mediate. This one very high in the air looks pretty good. Playing the game the way it's supposed to be played in the U.S. Open, that's for sure. Fairways and greens. And over to the 11th. And Tiger looking down the hill, 215 away. Well, he's got a four iron out, and he's kind of rehearsing that follow through, John, that would suggest to me that he's going to try to hit kind of a moon ball cut against the wind, which is uh, all coming against him in from the right. So. Yeah, the only problem with that shot is if you play like a high moon ball to go left to right and happen to hit it straight or draw it, that means you airmail the green. So, because it'll actually ride the wind. So, this is a dangerous selection if he's going to do that. He better hit the shot he wants. Well, there was contact off the 14th tee players driving there just before he took it back. So, uh, that got his attention. He'll start again. He's such a great long iron player, Roger, isn't he? I mean, just phenomenal with the long irons. Some of them are just almost otherworldly that he can hit with long irons. It's very, very high, and he's trying to cut, but mostly holding his line at the left center of the green. Just a total percentage shot. 16. And Camilo Vajegas on the tee with a four iron. That'll be an all out rip. <laughs> <laughs> that might be going left though. Well, slightly. Oh, but oh, that's a beautiful kick. <laughs> the spider turned into the pink flamingo. Wow. Man. That was a ripped four iron by a ripped guy. Let's take another look here. What a swing. Road trip. Speed here, Gary. I know from a three quarter position. Oh. Look at that yeah. stance. Yeah. <laughs> Man, most guys don't go at a driver that hard. That looks like Tiger Woods in 1997. Over at 12. Long birdie try for Lee Westwood. All pars, a bogey, and a birdie. This is a great hold to par. This is a very difficult hole. A lot of times the most difficult hole here at Torrey Pines. Just two birdies today, just 11 total for the championship. And Rocco Mediate is in command at the midway point of the third round of the U.S. Open Championship, trying to become the oldest champion ever. Michelob's recipe, we're going back 111 years. We have records from way back was draft only for almost 70 years of its existence. People would come from miles around to taste this wonderful beer. We're rooted in history, but it's also really exciting today to be trying new recipes and trying new things. We've got the Michelob Porter, Pale Ale, Bavarian Wheat. When everything comes into balance and that recipe's just right, we get really excited. There's a family behind the Michelob family of beers. Michelob, crafting a better beer. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else. For everything else, there's World MasterCard, the card that won't hold you back. What have you been doing? Uh, playing baseball. Ah. Where's the ferry? It's no boat. No boat? Come to the back, right? I'm a disaster. We could swim across. Swimming? Dennis! 
for what's going on here. Hi. Engine trouble? It's broken. Well, maybe I've got an idea. For auto, home, and business, travelers. In this game, we enforce the rules ourselves. That's why I'm my own referee. Line judge. Official. Umpire. Well, it's a good thing you're playing with a man of integrity. At the USGA, we believe one reason golf is so special is that the rules we established and maintain are ultimately enforced by you, the USGA, for the good of the game. Integrity. Second shot for Mediate from 133 at the 10th. How much is this draw, uh, Mark? And you can see that ball working to the left, but he knows what he's doing. He plays for it. And that's a beautiful shot. This is a birdie hole, though. You, you've got a few birdie holes in this golf course, and uh, this is one of them. And while we were away, this was Jimenez for par at the 12th. Oh, he slams it. Slams it. Still at work coming back for Bogey. 14. Shot of Ogilvy on the way. He drove it to the right. Had a reasonable lie there. Caught it heavy. Caught it fat. You don't see that every day, Murph. No, he From got, a perfect lie. He got very fortunate with that lie and yeah. then just hit it heavy. Back to 12. And now Miguel coming back for Bogey. All right, so back to back bogeys, though, for. Miguel and all the minutes five in all to go along with those two birdies so he falls back to plus two five behind. And so we I go over to 16 breaks that way he says. Here Bajegas has this uphill birdie putt chance to get to plus two should turn a little to his left. Oh played it to go right. Yeah. That was a misread. These greens are beguiling aren't they. Yes they are Johnny a lot of things going on. Um, you mentioned the ocean effect and of course all the little ridges and shelves as we go to 11. This was a moment ago Carlson for birdie. He needs something good to happen. Two doubles and two bogeys. Six over today. But five over. <laughs> Plus three. It's a lot of holes left folks. The guy can get to even par and stay there tomorrow. He's got a shot. Good right. shot. So now we're live here with Tiger. Yeah, well, Tiger. That, that certainly gave him a pretty good visual, John. It's yeah. not a uh, dissimilar putt at all from here. Of course, Tiger Woods is at a magical even level par number, which is an awfully good one, but he's never come from behind to win a major championship, which is hard to believe since he's won 13 of them. But if there's any course he can do it on, it would be here at Torrey Pines, which he calls pretty much home at the age of 15, won the 91 Junior World Championship Boys Division right here on this south course, won five other Junior World titles in that prestigious uh, Junior Championship, which is played around at various golf courses in the San Diego area. And he played one here this year in the San Diego Open, so. spirit of junior golf here in the area. The San Diego Junior Golf Association founded back in 1952 and uh, other notables who have won junior worlds. The South Course uh, has the 15 to 17 age division here and look at that list. That's a good one. David Toms, Pat Perez, Anthony Kim, players in this championship, a part of it. Back to 10. Big birdie chance for Rocco. We heard a right hand break. Got it. That's a Rocco roar. They're getting louder by the moment here. It's a four under. The lead is back up to three. Listen to that. Yeah, he pulls him in just like his hero and buddy Arnold Palmer. It's a gift that he's got. 
Back over to 11. Tiger for par. Really not a dissimilar putt to the one he had back at nine. Yeah, when he missed the eagle putt. Uh, yeah. He missed the little one from Birdie there. This is uh, pretty similar looking to me. Sort of vague looking? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, y y your gut tells you it wants to go left. I, I, I don't know how much uh, it might. And it had a lot of pace when it went past the cup, so I don't know if that was a real good indicator as to what it might do exactly around the cup, you know? The only way he's going to miss it if, is if he misreads it. Saves the par. Still loses a shot to Rocco with Rocco's birdie at 10. So Tiger is four behind and a tie for third with Davis Love and Jeff Ogilvy. As he heads over to the long par 412. That'll take him back out further toward the cliffs. And over at the uh, 12th, this was DJ Trahan a moment ago. Gave it a lot of hit with his hands there. On a flip like an old style stroke. We're going to see a birdie here. Yes. Just the third birdie all day at the 12th. And Trahan joins the group at even. Four strong now. Nice putt, DJ. Over at 14 now, Jeff Ogilvy for par. Hit a very poor chip shot. All of a sudden, just when it looked like he was going to blossom, he's got that left for bogey. Looks like he's looks like he's at an Olympics collecting pins. On his hat there. Looks like some sort of tourist. Yeah, I do. I love this one. <laughs> but Rocco's the leader by three. Uh, front here is 191, adjusted 183. Yeah. See that bottom left one, the Pebble Beach one, and the yeah. next one to it is the exactly. Torrey Pine. Can't see the other one. You know, Johnny Rocco is just now starting to round into form. He's only got one top 25. This year on the PGA Tour, but that was a sixth at Memorial. And of course, qualifying. Let's go, Rocco. Let's go, Rocco. Let's get there. Go. 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 Hit it pretty straight. Not even watching it. It's just so perfectly placed in the middle of the green. Didn't even have to watch it. I mentioned the Olympics. It's off to Beijing for the summer games. And you talk about pressure. How about the Olympic trials where you know you got to get on the team? And then you get to the Olympics and you've got one shot in four years. Michael Phelps and company face that kind of pressure. And we've got it for you beginning next weekend on NBC. There are the pins that uh, Rocco is sporting and to the tee at 12. And Tiger. This is an important tee shot to hit a good one. He's lost to right, I think. Well, maybe it's left. It is left. It looked like it was a right follow through, but it looks like it's sitting up reasonably uh, down. Not the worst lie we've seen, that's no. for sure. Looks like it might be down grain. Yeah, that's that's reasonable for a guy as strong as he is. Yeah, nothing Tiger can't tackle. 14. Hogovy now for his bogey. Boy, just like that. He's not done yet. Not done yet. And he'll he'll tap in over to 12 and Davis love for par okay. and they're starting to miss him now Murph just uh, sort of sad to see Davis is really putting up a good fight you got some guys that haven't played well like Davis and Rocco and you know it's hard not to pull for guys that have been working hard and not getting much out of it. Well, Davis not too bad. This would just yeah. be his second bogey of the day in all yeah. pars. I'm just talking about you know what's happened to him in the last couple of years yep. injuries and. Hey when you're in your mid 40s. Uh, you appreciate times like this in contention at a major championship like Davis Love and Rocco. Ogilvy did make double at 14, so he drops to plus two. That came after back-to-back -back birdies. You can go backwards in a hurry at the open. Back after this.
You don't really instill anything into a child. You encourage the development of it. But I would do all kinds of things to mess him up. Just as he's beginning to swing, I'd drop my whole bag of clubs. And he would stop. They would look at me and grit his teeth. And then he would strike it and turn around and look at me. And never say a word, but that look said, now take that. It's a tiger, and I promise you that you'll never meet another person as mentally tough as you in your entire life. And he hasn't, and he never will. Kids are normal kids, which means they're plugged in 24 hours a day. Even when we went on our big family trip, they were busy texting away or shooting spaceships or whatever. Hey, Tyler, are you coming? Yeah. But eventually, when we reached the phosphorescent bay, they discovered that sometimes the most captivating glow of all isn't battery powered. Whatever your story is, your city car can help you ride it because city never sleeps. It began with four professional golfers given four Lexus courtesy cars. Annika Sorenstam in an ISF. Charles Hall III in a GS Hybrid. Chichi Rodriguez in an LX570. <laughs> and Raymond Floyd in an LS460. Take the right, right here. What followed was hardly surprising. He was a key figure in both American journalism and politics. Our friend and colleague, Tim Russert, died of a heart attack on Friday as he prepared for this Sunday's edition of Meet the Press. Good afternoon, I'm Matt Lauer. News of Tim's death drew an instant outpouring of love and support from all over the world. Sundays will never be the same without Tim in his customary seat, going toe to toe with the biggest names in politics. He loved it. He loved putting their feet to the fire, holding them accountable for their words and their actions. But if there was one thing he loved more than politics, it was the family he leaves behind. His wife, Maureen, and his son, Luke. His father, whom he called Big Russ, and his three sisters. Tomorrow, Tom Brokaw will host a special edition of the show Tim Loved, dedicated to the life and legacy of its longest running host. Tim Russert was 58. Now back to Dan Hicks and NBC Sports coverage of the U.S. Open. Thank you, Matt. Tim uh, touched so many people's lives, and he was the kind of guy that even if you didn't know him, even if you just watched him do his broadcast, you felt uh, a connection to him. We offer our thoughts and prayers from here at Torrey Pines, uh, everyone in his family, as Tiger's shot lands in the bunker. This course is taking its toll. It's the hardest hole in the golf course. Over at 11, Rocco Mediate from a popular spot in the middle of that green. Got some break to the right here, a little bit up the hill, back into the wind, so not a particularly quick putt. Tiger went by a little bit, and so does Rocco. It's making it look pretty easy though, Mark, considering how much everyone else is struggling. Well, he is, and he's just so comfortable in everything he's doing. 17. And Camilo Bajegas with his second shot laid up off the tee here. Perfect position. Hole playing surprisingly difficult. Johnny, just three birdies here all day. Yeah, that's a good one there. Oh, yeah. So Bajegas will have a great opportunity to get it to. Two over par will be going ahead to 13. And Lee Westwood just short of the bunker there, Gary. Boy, that stuff's thick, Murph. Yeah, he just popped it up. Well played, got it right under the hole. That's a good leave. Back to 11. That will be for par. Man, has it been a struggle with a putter today. We haven't seen him make a thing, and he's three putted a couple of times from inside 12 feet. And that's after putting really well the first 36 holes. Real well. Out at plus 641. 
picks up his first bogey. The back nine falls to plus four. And you he's know, I don't think eight shots behind the guy he led by one to start yeah, the no, day. It, it's interesting, Dan. I don't think it has helped either that they're chanting Rocco, 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 you know, everywhere out here for Stewart. All right, Tiger at the 12th. Well, when you're seven over, you can't complain. Get around here, please. Thanks. Johnny, the ball's kind of settled a little bit. It's in one of the ridges in an area that has not been raked. And it's running diagonally from left to right. So it's not the best lie. He has to carry it across about, oh, 30 feet of uh, sand and then doesn't have a lot of grain to work with. Kind of runs away from it a little bit as well. Not an easy pucker shot at all here. Back into the wind, though, right? That is the one helping, one saving grace. Big swing, like a driver swing. And that's that couldn't lie. get any spin on it. Yeah, that's that lie you're talking about. That's a good call, Roger. That thing just even with that biggest swing, he couldn't spin it. And the the bunkers were deep raked by the USGA, which I think is a good idea. It makes the bunkers a bit of a penalty. I think that's why they put him in there. Back to 11, Rocco, to remain three ahead. He is the 158th ranked player in the world. And since the world rankings began back in 1986, the lowest ranked player to win this championship, Steve Jones, back in 1996, ranked number 99, 17. Bajegas for birdie. Little right to left break. Yes. Nice. He's got a little USGA history, Dan. He was runner up in USGA Junior, the one that Hunter Mahan won back in 1999. As we go to 13. Westwood for birdie. Yeah. Real nice, real nice. Miguel Angel made it from the fringe also. A couple of birdies there. Westwood moves to two under and as I was saying just prior to Westwood, he meant it from the fringe. Got very fortunate. That ball could go back down the hill so easily. He turns it into a four instead of whether those other numbers. Goes to plus one. Still in the tournament for sure. What a gallery we have. Man, there's a lot of people out here. Well, in case you didn't see the beginning of the show, what was it, 53,000 people yesterday? Nearly 53,000 yesterday. That was a Friday attendance record for a U.S. Open. 50,000 on the course today. They have come out to support this championship at Torrey Pines. Second for Ogilvy coming off the double at 14. Will that come back? It's a little hollow there. <laughs> Is that getting better by the second? And Ogilvy could get it back to plus one if he drops that in. T at 12, back up into the face of that hill. Usually a little breeze coming in. Not much today, though. Close, close stance, aiming at the right bunker and peeling off it. He, like I said, he only hits the ball, folks, about 265 yards. So this is a very big hole for him. And today, there's only been a couple birdies on this hole, just only, three. We mentioned it, the most difficult hole for this championship. And as you look at the holes most difficult since 1986, this 12th ranking second on that list, only the Olympic Club's 17th, which was a par four yeah. back in 98, up that hill, remember that? <laughs> That's a brutal <laughs> hole, that 17th at Olympic, being a par four. All right, Tiger trying to not drop a shot here, Roger. In this putt, uh, not too dissimilar to the putt that uh, was just missed by Robert Carlson. Will break a little to the left in his uphill, but uh, kind of a gentle breaker to the left, not a lot. But you're saying this is the kind of putt he could make. Absolutely. Oh, won't come that much. It went straight and actually tried yeah. to pull right towards the ocean at the yeah. end, and he had can't little, believe it. It had a little different angle, but uh, boy, it sure looked like it had to go a little left, certainly early in the putt. You know, you folks, what you don't realize, a guy like Tiger pushes and pulls probably one out of 30 putts. So it, all it is is speed and whether he reads them correctly. He doesn't push or pull them. So Tiger is back to that plus one number. That's where he was after he doubled the first and bogeyed the fourth. And 
now a full five behind Rocco Mediate. Westwood, the only other player under par. Sunday night is football night. It's football night. Touchdown. One reason Sunday night is football night is the schedule. The best games. Unbelievable. Which means you're going to have the big players. Manning under pressure and touchdown. Now you're talking. Sunday night is football night on NBC. Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio delivers a new age of golf equipment fitting. If they can help me, they can help anyone. Hit the ball farther and straighter at the Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio. There are more than 3,100 points to scrutinize. 3,100 digitally calibrated, laser inspected, welds, fittings, connections, and finishes on the RX to make sure it's absolutely flawless. Visit your Lexus dealer today for an exclusive look at how nothing else is built like a Lexus RX. Lease the 2009 RX for $449 a month for 36 months with $34.99 due at signing. Our summer savings event is going on now with fantastic savings store-wide. We promise you'll be inspired. McCreary's Home Furnishings. Honda. If you're looking to go green, maybe you should be looking for something more. With Honda, you get more. Consider the 2008 Accord. It's green and can take you 573 miles on a single tank of gas. It's green and made Car and Driver's 10 best list. And now you can get 0.9% APR financing on a new Accord. So see your Northern California Honda dealer and go green and save green with the Stylish Accord at 0.9% APR. It's green and it's a Honda. Thank you for making KCRA 3 the number one news source in the Sacramento area for more than 50 years. Leadership in covering local news. One more reason KCRA 3 is where the news comes first. KCRA 3 helps you survive I-5. Live team coverage Monday morning. A little more than four and a half hours through our third round coverage here of a total of six. That's going to take you to 10 o'clock Eastern time, prime time out on the East Coast. A little pink sky out there in the distance here out in California and out to 13. And the shot of DJ Trahan had it on a little bit of a downslope there. Not a bad play. Let's go to 12. And Rocco Mediate looking up the hill at 12. This is his whole location. This is the mine there. That's you know, this yep. is his spot right here, left hole location. He said he hit it where he wanted it. Just it needed to happen more club, but this is a hole you make four on, and you got to be pleased because it's playing what 4.6. <laughs> you got to love his attitude. Over at uh, Tiger now. Good look from the back of. 13 T there you see the hole straight away the bunkers on the right of course in play most guys will lay up a little bit short there but today it's playing 539 so a lot of guys can get a nice go at it the whole location right in the very front middle and there you see where the balls go they collect right down into that valley and back to the T now important tee shot a big tee shot takes care of it tiger made eagle here yesterday with a five wood probably won't take that much today if he gets it in the fairway there you go well today this is the easiest hole in the golf course we saw him squander the ninth hole after hitting the big drive we'll see what he does here bob Just came really fast and out of it. And that's going right, Roger. Yes, it is. He didn't like it at all. No. You know, if he gets it down there where it's trampled, I'm not sure he got that far over, but if he did. Uh, so far right, it's gone over the bunkers, I think. I see some marshals running. Yeah. That thing might there be just the people. fine. They might be able to get a drop there. They got some things in his way. And I would say there's a good shot that he might be just fine. Boy, that is really offline. It's a long ways. And up at the green now, and Davis Love having a look at his birdie putt. He is Murphy drove the ball in the left rough, and I'll set up the fact that he had to to lay up. Really has hit a number of good putts today, and it was really his first mental lapse back there at the 12th of that three putt. 
hard putt to read here. This ball just keeps going left and left and left. And there it goes. Can't see it up, Bob. Wandering away. No, they can't. No. Nope. Let's go up to Jimmy Roberts. Well, the 13th hole, the site of some dramatics earlier today, and for those who might be just tuning in, Phil Mickelson, the local favorite, a quadruple bogey nine on this hole, which likely ended his chances here as we take a look at a number of his shots on this hole. Afterwards, came out and met the press, said he was disappointed, but in good spirits. He to uh, told that it was his uh, first nine at the Open. He cracked that, in fact, he'd actually had a nine on that very hole before. Of course, he was eight years old when that had happened. He said the whole location was a good one, which was placed there to entice players, and it did him on his third shot, which uh, he hit with an L wedge. But uh, the fourth, fifth, and sixth were just poorly struck from perfect lies with a 64-degree wedge. As we said, a quadruple bogey nine. He did go on to birdie the 18th, as you're looking at here, to shoot 76, finish plus nine. As for tomorrow, Mickelson says he'll just try and enjoy the round. Look forward to next year at Beth Page. Remember that he finished second to Tiger Woods in 2002. He said that year was one of his favorite U.S. Open memories. Out to 13 now. And you see DJ Trahan's putt slide by high. That was a good chance to get under par, Bob. Or well, was it ever? Is this putt a little? be trying to get one back for the double he made at the previous hole and he has birdied three of the last four holes to go around that double bogey so Ogilvy's back to plus one with three holes to play and Davis for par now good speed good tap in it's hard to get close to that hole location from down below the green as it is Camilo Bijegas coming home in those pink pants. Third shot, par five. Three birdies on this back nine already. Yeah. Four total yeah. for the day. Yeah. Very dangerous. Might be going long, as Caddy said. It might spin back perfectly, though. Not much backspin, but it is trickling. Birdie putts getting shorter and shorter and shorter. It's a very dangerous hole if you just tuned in. If you hit the ball with spin and it comes back, it'll go right into the water every time. He's got a good chance to post plus one and a one under round. And back to 12. It's been a great ball striking day for yeah, this Rocco. Is impressive 11 right 12. Here. Yep. You know, Johnny, you talked also about Rocco and how much he likes this putter. He was only able to go from the long putter to the short putter once his back got fixed. It's a good point. This would be a good two putt if he can get it. The par here is almost a half birdie. Hardest hole in the course. A little bit slow here. We might have misread it a little bit, but good distance. A mark. Very good distance. Had that major back surgery in 1994. Played just six times that year. Dabbled in broadcasting. In fact, uh, I worked with him, Danny, Rocco, a couple of weeks last bare year. feet, didn't he, uh, Ross? Yeah, he was quite a hoot. <laughs> That's and, uh, the kind of guy he is. He, he was great. He didn't even really care what hole you were on, whether you are on his hole or somebody else's. He just announced golf. I mean, he was a walker on the golf course in bare feet. Now, a lot of the events that he did were in Hawaii, which is a little different than U.S. Open types of courses. But Vijegas now to post plus one. It's a quick putt. Up. Oh. Yeah, there that was just a push is all that was. Looking for his first win. And Bijegas after a third round 71. How close is he going to be to the lead by the end of the day? It's Rocco's right now at four under. This was a moment ago at 14. And Westwood's birdie putt. Uphill all the way. Good read. You got to read for a little ocean pull there, and it didn't happen. His stroke has gotten better. You know that, Bob? It's a good yes. stroke now. And now live to Miguel Unhell. It's a good birdie position as well. Should be pretty straight from here. It might work a little right at first. Speed, most important. He's plus one. 
two over for the day. Bango. <laughs> he said yesterday, I don't know why, but every time I had a birdie chance, I made it. Nice pot. That's quite the quite the figure he has. Yeah, you bet. He's a man in charge of his own <laughs> life. You can tell that by looking at him. Over to 12. And Menace is 44. Rocco 45. And Rocco's just uh, part of the toughest hole on the golf course. So he's through a major test at 12. Now he's got the easiest hole in the day uh, coming up, and he might get another bird. He put him five under. Let's go to 16. And Jeff Ogilvie's second shot, three iron tee shot, found this right green side bunker. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice recovery there. Back to 13. Now, Roger, did Tiger knock it in that uh, concession stand there? Did you get a hot dog or what? <laughs> well, I almost did. Not quite. The ball came to uh, rest just Perfect. left Thank of that. You. But there's a camera tower of ours uh, up ahead that was providing inter intervention between himself and the hole, so he got his opportunity to move the ball either side, and he chose to come left with it. So, is it uh, doable, Roger, from there? <laughs> Well, uh, yes and no, John. I mean, he's got a pretty good lie where the crowd has walked, but the shot is playing downwind. It's a shot of about 208 yards. Uh, and the hole's only cut on five paces. I mean, it'd be very hard to get the ball near the hole, I would think. Uh, and, of course, if you come up short, it's coming back, what, 50 yards, 60 yards? Yeah, we've seen a lot of shots, Everybody Roger, as you're side, talking about, get after he hits as well. right on the front of the green or around the front of the green and go right back down the hill. Is that the kind of lie, though, can twist a little? It's, you remember that lie? And last time I saw a lie look like that, you were covering it, Roger, and it was Wingfoot, and it was Phil Mickelson. You know, you know I, I, it's going to be a hard lie to control the ball. I mean, it's not going to be hard to cover the distance. It's not that kind of problem. But it is going to be hard to control the flight of the ball and certainly the spin of the ball. Well, if anybody could get the job done, Raj, and you had your choice of who to do it, I I'd think, pick him. I think you got the right guy. I'd pick him. And this eagle, if he were to somehow get it, I think would change the whole uh, championship. I really do. This could be the one. Changed the day yesterday when he made one here. Got him rolling the correct way. Golly, this is a great looking shot if the distance is good. That almost landed in the hole. It certainly appeared that way. I, I don't know how you can hit a better shot than that. I don't. I have no idea how you can hit a better shot than that. Take Murph, a look at this swing, Johnny. Take a look at this. Back in his stance, huh, Murph? Really still, look at his head. His head is just, he's just loading up that left arm. It's almost hypo extended. And look at the drive into those thighs. Delay, release, stay down, head down. That is perfection. Yeah. Right there is as good as I've ever seen. And watch this land now. Let's see how close she comes to hitting that flag stick. Ah, I just landed a little past. Man, that was, what a shot. That was, this next one's not gonna be that easy, but want another look? One more look and watch the crowd as they, everybody wants to get a view of this shot. Look at that guy. Look at this guy right here. Back <laughs> off. <laughs> Back off. <laughs> For people close to retirement, there are plenty of ifs to go around. If our savings will last, if we should take Social Security when we hit 62 or 67. MetLife can strengthen your retirement plan by providing a lifetime stream of income that's guaranteed and that works together with your investments, helping you create a safety net that promises Happy New Year's with guarantees for the if in life. Learn how MetLife can help you make the most of what you have in retirement. Introducing the Simply Everything plan from Sprint. For just $99.99 a month, you get unlimited nationwide calling, texting, web surfing, emailing, picture and video messaging, and Sprint TV. Now you can use your phone for all the great things it can do without worrying about the meter running. 
The Simply Everything Plan, only from Sprint and only on the Now Network. Now organize everything in your life with a Palm Centro, only $99.99. Space is infinite, but it's my job to shrink it. I work for an air and space museum, and I take the largest objects in the universe and bring them down in size. So when my doctor said that my going and going could get worse because my prostate was growing, I said, how can we shrink it? He said, Avidart. Avidart is different because over time, it actually shrinks the prostate, so I go less often. Other medicines, they don't treat the cause because they don't shrink the prostate. Avidart is for men only. Women should not take or handle Avidart due to risk of a specific birth defect. Tell your doctor if you have liver disease, rarely sexual side effects, swelling, or tenderness of the breasts can occur. Only your healthcare professional can determine if your symptoms are from an enlarged prostate and not prostate cancer. So have regular exams. Ask your doctor about Avidart today. It's your growing problem. It's our job to shrink it. Have a dart. How often is it when the entire world can share a moment as it happens? A moment of dreams or disappointment, of defeat or triumph. This summer, they will come from every country on earth for the Olympic Games. See the world's best and see the world at its best. The Olympics, coming to NBC. Well, welcome back. We're at the 13th hole. We're right in the bottom middle of your screen. You see Tiger's ball just in the fringe. Murph, this is this as crazy a putt as I think it is? He could putt it all the way 50 yards down the hill, couldn't he? Absolutely. It, what do you think? Yes, you can. Definitely, I have seen someone putt it off the green today. Tell you what, Murph, when you're on the bleachers, behind the 12th you get up and turn around and watch Tiger especially after uh, that incredible shot to this par five. I don't see a lot of empty seats there guys. The mounds all around and back of the green. Roger it's full of people. How crazy is this putt? Well he's got the ball up by the collar in the fringe here in the back which is going to provide a little bit of interest for him. He's going to have to pick the club up a little quicker than he might like, and then you've got to control the speed coming down the hill. It's not an easy putt. What happens if he hits it nine feet by? Well, nine feet by might have to hit it a little bit more than that to knock it off the green, I would think. There is a bit of a false edge, though. Got to put it out there three, four feet to the right. The last uh, 10, 12 feet, Roger, it just keeps going left and left and left. I've not seen anyone miss a putt to the right of the hole from in back of the hole. He's looking pretty far right, Murph. Yeah. Looks like he knows what he's doing. I'd, I'd guess that. His eyes are way out in the air, Murph. Yeah, he might be playing it good five feet. One more look to read it as one thing to hit it with the exact speed. But Steve Williams knows it's looking good right now. <laughs> Welcome to Tiger Pines, huh? There are those folks back up in the stands. Good thing they were looking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was better than Bay Hill. <laughs> A Tory Tiger roar. <laughs> he can do some things in golf. My, oh, my, oh, my. Watch this. I love Steve Williams' reaction to this thing. Absolutely. 
He's got the feeling. He's got the feeling. <laughs> Best seat in the house, Steve Williams. I'll tell you, they have a lot of fun together, those two guys. Oh, man. They work hard, but they really have a lot of fun. It's an amazing relationship between the two. How about you folks on the East Coast oh, coming up geez. on 9 o'clock? I don't think you're going anywhere to bed early, huh? That was about as good as it gets. And up at 14 now. DJ Trahan for a par. DJ's hanging in there very nicely. He is. He hasn't really made anything all day except for that one long one at the 12th. Missed the fairway here right. Uh, good par, but Sometimes you have to take time to pat yourself on the back. These U.S. Open courses are so difficult. Hey, Murphy, we want to update the attendance today. 54. That sounded like 154,000 after that eagle dropped. They're all right here under my tower, I can tell you that. And people are so jazzed right now. That's something they'll be telling their grandkids about. And back in the fairway now, after all that excitement, Rocco Mediate coming at the green. And he had to back off with all that commotion at the green ahead. I don't know what he's trying to do here with this shot, Johnny. Boy, there's some bad spots you can hit it here, and that's not that's not a good spot. It's a long bunker shot. Oh. I don't know about that decision at all. I mean, I don't think he had any chance to reach the green. Long bunker shot, soft sand there. Yeah, it's a flat bunker, mm. and um, if you chunk it, it could come all the way back down the hill. But things have been going well for him. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 14. Hey, hey, Roger, I got to ask you, is that one of the loudest noises on a golf course you've ever heard? Excuse me, my ears are still ringing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good right oh, there. Man, that, that was that was thunder across the Pacific. Oh, man. Well, he hit the bad drive, but, you know, he got it out where the gallery was walking and he took advantage of a drop and then hit a terrific shot, obviously, and an impossible putt. Eagle two days in a row on that tough par five. Incredible turnaround after a drive like that. Slight dog leg to the left now, the 14th. And I would imagine even Tiger has to gather his thoughts here. Well, as my dad always said, when you have a great hole, don't give it away with a bogey on the next hole. In other words, keep your concentration. That bright light is the sunshine. Starting to get some patches in this uh, overcast. You know, go two miles to the east and it's bright and sunny. So Steve Williams step in there and give some last words. Don't you think this is a power draw, Roger? I think that's the perfect shot, shape. Take it up the right and turn it over. Is that to the right? And he started it right, but it is not turning. It is going to mess well right up in the gallery. Well, let's see if he gets lucky here. He might have a tree in his way. Oh all those people's converge on that ball. There's nothing like golf, though. There's no other sport you can just get right next to a guy and enjoy the action just like they did on the last hole. I think that's one reason why Arnold Palmer was so popular. All right, Westwood's third in front of the green at the par four, 15th. He's a two under. Tiger's gotten within one of him, and Westwood's the closest to mediate, and he's nice going to save par here. Westwood's going to stay at two under, one under for the championship. But the roar all you primetime viewers just heard about 3,000 miles across the country on the East Coast was the Tiger Wood Eagle at 13. Give it the Tiger Pump. It began with four professional golfers given four Lexus courtesy cars. What followed was hardly surprising. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. The meeting was at 10.30 on the dot. The drivers listened attentively. Then, with a simple exchange. See you at the open. It began. <laughs> let's go, let's go.
You see, the competitive spirit is never idle. And when each was given the chance to drive a Lexus to the open, competitive golfers became competitive drivers. She's even more beautiful now. Are you me? Quite a while from now. So, how'd I do? You did great. But don't forget about us. Even in retirement, we still need financial advice. We have to protect and grow our money. You never know what's around the corner, Grandpa. Get to know your future self with Lincoln Financial Group at lincolnfinancial.com. We make meeting times, lunch times, and conference times. But what we'd rather be making are tea times. Tea times are the official start of what we love to do. The time for shots we'd rather forget and the ones we'll talk about forever. In Michigan, long days, relaxing weather, and more than 800 pristine courses make for the perfect tea time. Because being able to play all day is pure Michigan. Your trip begins at michigan.org. I believe someday I'll drive the ball 300 yards. Make a hole-in-one. Beat my sister. My brother. My dad. <laughs> Sign autographs. Lots of autographs. A million autographs. Shoot my age. Break 65. Approach 18 with a three-shot lead. Sink a 10-foot putt. To win the U.S. Open. Win the U.S. Open. Twice. At the USGA, we believe champions can come from anywhere. That's why we have championships for everyone. The USGA, for the good of the game. at all. And it will break a little left at the start. Johnny, that's better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most. This looks good. Just a little while ago, Tiger, you know, we got to keep adding to that reel because Tiger just keeps adding incredible moments. Eagle at 13. Wow. Johnny, we've been watching this guy since he was a teenager winning U.S. Amateur Championships. And I'll ask you, why is it that just one guy, I know he's talented, and I know that he's worked hard, and I know that he's a champion, but one guy making all of these putts at the crucial moments, it's just, it's just, it's beyond description. I know. Remember, it started with Steve Scott, 17th hole, Pumpkin Ridge, this long putt, and he makes it and beats him in the playoffs. So, I mean, it is amazing. He just has that ability to... I don't know how he does it. That, everybody's underread that putt. Why did he know that thing broke six feet when no one else could figure it out? And the up and in from where he was. But like I said, he doesn't want to throw away the momentum. He's gotten another good break being in the trampled area with a pretty good angle. But over the green here is dead. So you, you got to be careful here. Just be real still after hit the ball, please. Well, he's got as good an angle as you could possibly get, John. I mean, this yeah. is, you know, he can work a little something right to left and get it toward the hole. And you can see the bushes. He is, you know, you can see if he hits it over, he is in, uh, uh, it's in a hazard. So, but it runs right away. You're exactly right. Choking down on it, Bob. 179 here, yeah. into the wind. Oh, he's got this moving a little left. Catches the bunker. That'll be a long bunker shot. That was a very poor shot for Tiger. But with the problem is when you go with the lower draw, uh, when it lands, it's landing way short. He was trying to hit it through the gap, I think, with a controlled punch shot. And just a moment ago, Rocco's third from the long bunker here. Oh, nicely played, nicely played. 
That is such a tough shot. Will that come back a little, Murph? Yeah, it'll just collect a little bit back towards the center, not much towards the hole. Coming back a little, like yep. you say, but that's a good shot. That was turn out. right. Because if he chunks it and comes down the hill, he might, who knows what he might make. Now, here's the birdie. Is this the one guys are missing left? Yes, the ball just keeps working. It really breaks off quickly. Looks pretty good. He's got it riding a little too fast. A little too fast to take that same break we're talking about. Up to 16. And Lee Westwood on the tee, three iron in hand. Just a little left by his body language. Stay there. He's yelling and it doesn't. Didn't miss by much. Did no, it? it didn't. If it's about three feet farther to the right, Johnny, it would have kicked to the right. Back to 13. And Rocco for his par now. Rocco's been very, very good with the short putts, putting the ball with good speed. Not only that, everyone's gone in. <laughs> That's a good good little thing to do, but uh, can he keep doing it? He's had quite a few of these. You just don't want to keep leaving these, Johnny, particularly, you know, when you have a makeable birdie putt. Seems like he's been making them in the middle, though, Mark. He has. Oh, that was the one. That, what a that big swing, that, huh? That big pull, yes. How loud was that roar, Mark? You were down there waiting it, for that. Well, we were up in the fairway, and it was incredible. I mean, uh, you know, you just knew what had happened. A three-shot swing right there. That's changing the championship. Between Tiger and Rocco. Yeah, huge. At 13. Yes, sir. Three shots in one hole is a big, big difference. That hurts right there for Rocco. Well, it was a, a tough position for sure. Okay. What, guys? This is one of the reasons why they uh, made this, kept it a par five. Dramatic second shots, and Ogilvy has one over the water here at 18 at plus one. He's got as good a ball flight as anybody in the championship. He hits it sky high. Got a perfect lie uphill a little bit, just has to hit it flush. Well, he hit a flush all right. Right next to Ernie Els, over to 14. Tiger's bunker shot. And a hard one. I think he's not going to play it at the hole. I think he's got to play it right at the hole. He's on a downhill slope. No green to work with, really. Certainly behind the hole. Long bunker shot. I think he just had to play a safety. Yeah, you can't get brave from there, can you? You catch it a little thin and you're gone. All right, at 15, third at the par four for DJ Trahan, even par. Three back. That was an interesting little come over pull, uh, chip shot with no spin. And over to 17. And Robert Allenby's second shot, well positioned off the tee, right side of the fairway. Sounded like a good solid strike, and it is. So uh, Robert Allenby will have a short birdie putt, a chance to get to two over for the championship. And we go back to 14. And Rocco teeing it up there. Disappointing bogey, but it's played awfully well. Sets up nice for his mm, hook, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is a comfortable drive for Rocco somewhere in the neighborhood of the corner of that tree, that big tower crane out there. up at the green now and Tiger's par putt. Yeah, he's got to put it up across that ridge where from here. Yeah. And kind of putting into the setting sun, which I never thought was much fun. It's a bright sky behind the hole. Well, you can see a shadow. He is dead into the sun, Roger, just like you said. And it's just going right to the hole, isn't it, Murph? That it shadow. Is. Yeah, and this putt will be hard with all those factors. It's hard to get this putt to the hole from what I've seen today. Is this vague, this putt, Roger? It's sort of a vague putt to read. Yeah, it, it really is. 
You know, I just it's hard to be precise with the read is what I'm saying. Right. I, I just think his speed is the big issue here. You just feel, you feel like if it does anything, it has to go a little right. The boy he had the speed done right on cue there. Well, eagle then bogey, as you said, Johnny. Yeah, you don't want, when you get that excited, you have to almost take a couple extra moments to settle down and get back to basics. Trey Hand to stay three back. That was a pull, wasn't it? That one he gave a little toe down at impact. First bogey in the back nine for Trahan. He slips to plus one, plus two on the day. He's playing well. He's right in it. He's four back, 16. Just a moment ago, Lee Westwood's bunker shot. Good lie. Comes out of there with some spin, so he'll have a chance to save his par and a two under and now live he meant it for his par he buried it in the front right bunker Johnny and uh, mm -hmm. kind of couldn't get any spin on it coming out of there this one down the hill moving to the right these par threes are a real issue this week aren't they Gary? yes Johnny they are indeed especially this 16th at 232 yards so we go to 18. All right, Ogilvy's third coming back down this slippery slope and right up against that cut. This is a tough shot. Just blade it and uh, throw it out to the right. He's now he's moving speed. right. He's got some speed. Holy mackerel. That has got some speed. Holy mackerel. Oh, man. <laughs> One foot from the water. And the gallery knew it. They're thinking they've been that there for a while. Might go in. They know the right speed, and that one was traveling. Well, he struck it perfectly right on the equator, which is what you want to do. It doesn't pop it up and over. An anxious moment, huh? Oh man, I thought it was oh, going to go on down. All right, love for par at 15. To stay four behind. Wow, that's a, that's a shame there. He was right there at plus one. 16. Jimenez for his bogey. Just to uh, put him at plus one. Doesn't it feel like Sunday almost? <laughs> it does, Johnny. This one will go a little to his left. Yeah. All right, that's a good putt. Back to 14. And Rocco's ready with his second here. Tough combination, an uphill lie into the wind. Great hole location for his draw. This from 161. That's a good shot. shot. Absolutely leaves it right under that little rise in the green. Felt like he didn't complete the swing as well as he wanted to there. They said he sort of came up and out of it. Yeah. But that was his hole location. You know, when you got a draw, you, you, those left holes locations are pretty juicy. But you can't go long. Back at 16, Johnny, this to me was always the most difficult kind of putt in a U.S. Open. Downhill, a little bit of left to right break. I believe he is the guy Tiger's got to watch out for. His stroke is magnificent right now. Got a lot of experience. Oh, what a nice putt. You were mentioned about uh, the illness coming in, not feeling well the last couple of weeks, and he was saying that uh, because of that, he really had no expectations coming in here, and he thinks that's one of the reasons why he's playing so well. Sort of the opposite of Phil Mickelson, right? That's exactly right. As uh, we move ahead to 17, and Allen be for a birdie three, and he gets it to go down, so he's just plus two with the reachable par five, 18th coming up. Well, right before the final round tomorrow gets underway, you want to tune into the Golf Digest U.S. Open Challenge. It was played last week on this golf course.
celebrity group, including Dallas Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo, Matt Lauer of the Today Show, and Justin Timberlake, along with John Atkinson. U.S. Open Challenge tomorrow, 2 Eastern time on NBC as they try to break 100. It was entertaining stuff. Very entertaining and very compelling. I liked it. You will, too. So Ogilvy with a little par putt left. That was not a good putt there. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, in the U.S. Open Challenge, they played the same back tees. The, the course was stretched out to 7,600 yards plus, and you'll see how uh, some single-digit uh, handicap guys <laughs> and handled it. It was yeah. all started by this guy last year when at Oakmont he said a 10 handicapper couldn't break 100 on the course. Well find out tomorrow and see how they did. This is a very difficult hole folks. It's like hitting down a just a bowling alley. You got to just flush it. It's so narrow. You got trees left, trees right. And a strip a hole. That might be the knee there. That's the knee. That's the knee there. It's actually pretty good, but that hurt him. That hurt him big time. No weight on the left knee. A lot of torque this on that. Is, this is the left knee here, and it is absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, it's taking its toll. It got him late in the day on Thursday. We haven't seen a lot of wincing from Tiger, but it's got the latest every example. Day. Watch his swing here. Maybe you can see something, uh, folks. Takes it back here, and this is a good shot, by the way. But look at that knee. Watch how it snaps right here. That's where he gets that power, and up he goes out of it. And the torque on that, uh, when you've got 128 miles an hour club head speed, he's hitting the ball over 320 yards. You know, he doesn't have to swing quite that hard, but you can see he is major league in pain there. Plus, your adrenaline's pumping, and you know, Johnny, you get in the sporting arena, you get a championship in that championship mode. You you, you do can't back to off. Forget about the injury, and you just don't back off. Tiger has been asked about it every day. You see, normally he doesn't carry a driver, folks, but it's basically a cane right now. Let's go to 18. And Ernie Els for birdie. See if he can get in at plus three. Six back. Yeah. Nice, Ernie. First and only birdie of the day for Els, who began with a bogey. Pretty good score for no birdies. 74. Plus three round for the Big Easy, who will go after another open title tomorrow. 17. Lee Westwood on the tee. Taking a three wood, trying to uh, play short of the fairway bunkers down the right hand side. Is that going to come back? I don't think so, Johnny, and that's in oh. the thick stuff. Ouch. Back to 14. Rocco's birdie putt on the way. Oh. Rocco said yesterday, this is not about me. This is about Tiger, I know. But I'd like to see how I can play against that man. Playing well. Ogilvy cleaning up his par at 18. A cool customer. He's already won this championship. Battled his temper, a raging temper, earlier on in his career and as a youth, but has since been able to handle that and get in contention that, in majors. And that was a good back nine with a double bogey and not making the birdie there, 35. Yeah. So could have been a lot better. One under back. And Rocco over at 14. This is when the putts get a little tougher after missing the little one in the last hole. Lee in good speed. Rocco mediate leads by one. Tuesday, 9, 8 central. What do you do for a living? I sell insurance. This summer, root for the underdogs. You are a very special talent. America's Got Talent returns Tuesday, 9, 8 central on NBC. Honda. Today, everyone wants to go green, and green is good, but is green enough? Not for Honda. Take the 2008 Civic. It's green and can take you 475 miles on a single tank of gas. It's green and is on all the best buy lists. And now you can get 1.9% APR financing on a new Civic. So see your Northern California Honda dealer and go green and save green with a fuel-efficient Civic at 1.9% APR. It's green and it's a Honda. Morning. 
So what do you think then? Get an early start in that alfalfa on the back 40? What's the hurry? Hit the snooze. Great milk comes from happy cows. Happy cows come from California. Make sure it's made with real California milk. Every car maker's focusing on fuel efficiency, but they've forgotten about the power. At Nissan, we do more with a drop of fuel than any other manufacturer. The dependable Altima, versatile Sentra, and reliable Versa. Three performance sedans with 31 miles per gallon or higher. Lease the Nissan Altima for $199 a month, or get $1,500 Nissan cash back on Sentra. Nissan sedans, lean, mean, driving machines. Thank you for making KCRA3 Sacramento's number one news source. Tiger after another knee knocking swing on the tee here with his second at 15. This from 161 has to hoist it up over a eucalyptus tree. Well ahead of him, he said very, very high and just a little left of the hole. And Roger, as he was coming down the fairway, you noticed a, a difference in the gate coming down. Yeah, you can tell it's a guarded gate now and his left foot really isn't flexing like it would normal stride. He's kind of guarding it and uh, you can tell it hurts. Uh, right here, Tiger thinks he has just knocked the flag out. It is dead center, beautiful swing there. Really loads up that left arm and left uh, lat muscle and drives in under good delay. Beautiful release, turns it down just right. And he, the fact that you're trying to hit it high over a tree, the process of opening the face a little absorbs energy and you can come up short. Uh, you almost have to take a half a club more to offset the fact you're trying to hit it high. Let's go to 17. Lee Westwood from a horrible lie in the right rough. Johnny, I think this is just a hack out trying to get it back into the fairway. That's experience, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Don't try to get too much out of it. He looks like he's a heck of a player right now. He, to well, me, he, he has worked very hard on his uh, physical. He's lost a lot of weight. He's working out very hard. He said he feels as strong as he's ever been. So we go back to 16 and Trahan's second shot. Ooh, that had a nice sound to it. Oh, out a shot. There's that little thump you're looking for from the bunker. And you viewers at home, learn to make that sound. You'll hit better bunker shots. Well, we'd uh, like to thank MetLife for having all of today's round covered from end to end with great aerial shots from above, uh, courtesy of Snoopy 3. That life guarantees for the if in life. Back to 15. And Rocco Mediate working on a one under round again. Leader by one over Westwood, who is scrambling yeah, over at 17. And Rocco has found another fairway. Yeah, uh, just on the edge, but uh, sitting down a little. That's sort of a bad break there. That ball went down. All right, second par 5, 18. Allenby, who's at plus two. A dangerous shot. And he swings for all he was worth. See where it goes. Just yeah. kind of up in front there. That's a dangerous layup, I'll tell you that. It's just a sliver of spot that he hit it to. But a good shot. 17. And Lee Westwood with his third. Donnie Pepper, you have now joined this group. I have Gary, and he has 105 left for that third. to get the ball at least to hole high. He could spin this back. Yeah, that should be a good yardage for a full sand wedge, I would think. Throw it a little bit behind the hole and bring it back just like that. Well done. <laughs> a little wry smile there. He knows he's uh, done just what he was supposed to. So we go up to 18. Playing with Allenby, third for Luke Donald, having a tough day, plus seven on the round coming into this par five last. Mr. Stylish Swinger. And it might get a little better. Good shot, Luke. Chance for his very first birdie of the day at 18. Back over at 15 at Tiger. You know that knee, it's the same knee in which he had two previous surgeries the first way back in 94 he removed they removed a benign tumor the second 
was an arthroscopic procedure back in December of 2002 and Tiger was quick to point out this week that following that last surgery he came out and won his uh, first start some 10 weeks later right here at Torrey Pines at the uh, Buick Invitational but yeah, any doctor will tell you that the more times you have surgery the more times you go in there the more question marks are surrounded. Yes. I had my surgery exactly the same thing he did two days before he did so I'm really relating to everything that's happening to him. All right Roger. All right as the putt uh, through about three four feet of fringe here and the ball will move right to left as uh, an uphill putt. He's looking pretty far right Roger. Well, it's gonna it's got some pretty good turn. He's looking out there a couple feet. Not gonna get there. Boy, that was tracking dead center. He had it red right on the button. He'll stay at even with three holes to play. Tiger was trying to root it on but as Roger said just never quite had enough. Well if you are a Tiger fan you can get your Tiger fix at NBC Sports .com daily to watch every single shot he hits in the third round of this U.S. Open just get on to NBC Sports .com and you can relive that eagle at 13. You and know, all the other shots. You know, one thing we, yeah, a lot of people don't realize right now, he's actually two over par for the day. Just one birdie on uh, number seven and the eagle at 13. So let's look at Allenby here. Allenby bumping it with a fairway medal here for his third coming up. Well, it rolled very true, didn't it? But he didn't hit it. Oh, well, it's not too good there, Robert. Great setting behind this 18th hole, 4,000 seat grandstand. Now Jimenez. And this, uh, unfortunately for him, a lengthy putt for par, drove it in the left rough, and his second shot was long and left. And Dottie, a very awkward putt here from a low level up to the higher level where the hole's cut. Yeah, it has to go over a, a bit of a spy, and the hole itself is sitting in this little teeny tiny uh, hollow. Very creative hole location. <laughs> Gary, do you think the open setup and the pressure of winning an open, it just grinds on you, just sort of wears you down. You know, it just it wears down your energy and your, you know, just the shot making and your nerves putting. And it's just, it's just not for everybody to keep it going. It's hard to keep it going. Yeah, it certainly is, Johnny. And uh, we see here, Menneth with just 21 putts through 16 holes. Just seems like everything is so magnified, isn't it, Johnny? I mean, it, it requires just such precision with the shot making. Uh, we've seen how difficult the putting is. How many short putts have we seen miss today? And even Tiger Woods says heart, because you're going to go through periods where it's just tough. Test every bit of you. Slow putt here. Difficult to get it to the hole. Seen it all day long, Johnny. Touch from that position. Not a bad leave, though, if you're not going to make it. Back at 15. And Rocco Mediate, leader by one over Westwood, by three over Tiger, who's in solo third. Mark? Intermediate yep. rough for Rocco, but a pretty good lie. Unfortunately, he plays a draw predominantly, so he can get around the tree in front of him. 191 to the hole, and the green is open in the front. Try to overhook it. Mark. All right, right, go. That one is overhooked, Johnny. You're correct. That bunker was just talking to him, and uh, yeah, I think the last minute he said, "Don't leave it out to the right," and then he closed it down. And that dove it is thick stuff. 17. Lee Westwood, put for a par to remain at two under. And Gary, I believe this is hit firmly. He does not need to get this ball out outside the hole at all. Oh, I agree. It's a very straight putt, Dottie. Just, yeah. oh, just smooth that stroke is, Dottie. It's so smooth. You got a little envy. So 
Westwood remains just one back with Mediate in trouble at 15. We go ahead to 18. And a slippery little putt here for Robert Allenby. I'll tell you a stat that's hard to believe, folks. The uh, best finish this great player has had in 48 majors is a tie for seventh at the 2004 U.S. Open. So Allenby needs to turn that around before he's done. Tiger at 16. Got the four iron out here. 232. Wind really kind of dying, but more from the right than it is hurting, certainly. We really don't need to carry the ball much more than about uh, 215 or 17 yards. It will bounce and release back toward the whole location. Lynn is probably this way, Gary. Yeah, and again, I think as Raj said, uh, Johnny, it seems to have died down some as the afternoon has worn on. Yeah, the flags at 18 are just blowing nicely. It's a high spot there. Got that club pretty late off at the top for him, Gary. Now this turning a little left of the hole. That's uh, he had it shut at the top. Do you see his wrist bowed, Gary? Yeah, that was. Uh, He's asking, where did it go? He's looking into the sun. He can't tell. Let's take a look at this position at top, Gary. You, you notice, see if you notice the same thing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I would agree with you, Johnny. That was uh, certainly more laid off than what we've seen of late. Yeah, and that was a pretty big draw, too. Yeah. Of course, he might have been trying to draw it, but he definitely laid it off, and that's why it went left. To 15. All right, what's the lie like, Mark? It is not good. The setting sun is behind Rocco, which means the rough is laying in that direction. Wow. So uh, he does have quite a bit of green to work with, but it's not an easy shot. I'd say anything within six, Look where seven he's feet would be pretty good. Wow. That's not good at all. That just that'll, that'll probably probably bury. Play. That's probably going to bury. If it does, he's really in trouble. Rocco's getting rocked here at 15. That's just the second green he's missed all day. Look at his, uh, you can see his face is just in shock right now. He's trying to play a bunker shot, folks, where you hit about two inches behind it and kick it out to the right, and he got too much ball. You know, he just hit it flush. In the bunker there, oh, he did saw come out. I thought it was going to bury yeah. under that lip. You know, it's very lucky that came out of that lip because he'd had nothing. Imagine if it had buried there, Mark. Well, you know, he took a chance with the shot, and I think probably he would have been better off playing a more conventional shot, Johnny, and just trying to get it to 15 feet. He is putting well. Is this on a downslope? A little bit of a downslope, and Got he's going to have to play well right here. He's got to take his time right now, because this has uh, got six written all over it, and his lead is gone. In the hole. About all he could do from there. Now Westwood's going to be the new leader unless he makes that. Yep, that's going to be a long putt for Bogey. All of a sudden, Tiger Woods is only going to be probably two back on one guy. It happens in a hurry in a U.S. Open. Now Lee Westwood is going to be the new leader here, off the tee at the par five. He's got birdie birdie already on this hole. Look at that posture and the finish. Total balance. Just perfect balance. I just got a feeling that he is he's on his A game. Putting and hitting. Back over to Tiger at 16. And uh, Raj, if you had a chance to look at the lie, it appears as though we can see some of the ball. Yeah, it's a pretty good lie. It really is. Uh, uh, better than I expected it might be. And uh, not the most difficult chip. He has to chip across a little bit of a ridge in the green, about two thirds of the way to the hole, and the ball will work from left to right. Johnny got it way back in his stance. Going to try to pick the club up quickly and just get the thing scooting a little bit. You want to grip it firmly on these and just brush it. Good though. There's a lot of break in there. That yeah. leaves himself a big curler, I think. Yeah, it does. It's definitely a left to right breaker from there. Not the leave he wanted, huh, Roger? That's a tough one. No, I, that ball checked up. It bounced straight up in the air, and I'm sure he wasn't playing for that at all. He doesn't like it. To 15. And a long bogey look for Rocco Mediate. 
And still a point, Johnny, where I think he needs to be a little careful here because he wants so much to make it and not, you know, walk off with a six. But if he races it past the hole three feet, he's going to have a tough one coming back. You know, really, it's sort of an unforced error, isn't it, Mark? Because he was in good shape off the tee for his little draw second shot. Be a great putt if you can get it, but that's a double bogey. It's his first double bogey of the championship. Got to make that, but looks like he should make that. He's going to drop all the way back to minus one, just one in front of Tiger. Out of the lead. And it's going to belong to Lee Westwood here in just a moment, officially. 108th U.S. Open Championship is being brought to you by Titleist for the 60th straight year. Titleist, the number one ball played at the U.S. Open. By MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. By Lincoln Financial Group, get to know your future self at LincolnFinancial.com. And by Lexus, exclusive vehicle of the USGA and U.S. Open Championship. Just past 630 out here on the West Coast. That marine layer finally history with the sun popping through just about the time Tiger made that eagle at 13. And the MetLife blimp providing the beautiful shots high above La Jolla, California and this 108th U.S. Open. Now for the double for mediated 15. And he just watched Stuart Appleby miss it from about two feet again. So he needs to get that out of his mind. And he needs to try to recapture that happy go lucky spirit at a most difficult time. He's played plus three golf the last three holes. He's had the lead all day long virtually Johnny since he opened uh, up with a par and a birdie took the lead from Appleby at the second hole has had it all the way until he just lost it at 15. We go to 16 and Tiger eyeing this putt for par and as we mentioned uh, not an easy one Raj. Oh it's a nasty little putt here it really is. It's a good four feet and uh, it's going to be moving right the second it comes off the putter blade. It's just so hard to get online. You can really see that break from this worm cam, huh, Gary? Uh, yeah, yes, Johnny, an area of the green that slopes pretty severely from the back toward the front. What's it outside, five inches? Well, I think it'll depend somewhat on the speed he chooses to hit it, but yeah, it could be as much as that. We'll go up to 18. And Westwood, the leader, is going for it, Dottie. 226 yards, a slightly uphill lie. Wind from the left. That is headed at the right center of the green. Takes guts to hit that shot. A lot of guts. That's a popular spot right there. A lot of guys hit the green, just hit it long. That's very good. A lot better than laying it up. 16. Woods for par. Yes. Solid. Tiger Woods remains at even par. Yeah, nice. I broke. Yeah, wow. That's a good putt. Lee Westwood at two under par holds a one shot lead. Now he's just over the green at 18 and two. Can he get it up and down? Stay with us. Business suit. None. Office cubicle. None. Corporate ladders to climb, none. A small business to call your own, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For being your own boss, there's credit or debit MasterCard business card. Can I help you, sir? I got a hole in one. Congratulations. How big can we make my hole in one? Um, three by five banner might be nice. So we should make some copies of my hole in one. Okay. And we should collate them. They all say the same thing. Really? What is that? And you got a hole in one? Okay. FedEx, proudly bringing you the FedEx Cup. Open. 
It's not how you mark your golf ball. It's how you mark your Titleist. How do you mark your Titleist? So live longer, retire stronger, never outlive your money. Ask your financial advisor about AIG. This Father's Day, before you watch the final round at Torrey Pines, wow, watch as Tony Romo, Matt Lauer, and Justin Timberlake challenge golf's toughest test. That. The U.S. Open Challenge. Tomorrow on NBC. Welcome back at the 17th, Tiger Woods on the tee. He hasn't oh. hit a fairway in a long time, Gary. Oh. oh, this is right to right. Well, that uh, knee gave out that time, Johnny. You can see it looked like he tried to hit that little stinger. When's the last fairway he hit? It's been a while yes, since like has. number 10 or something, right? Yes. Look at that, look at that, man. This is uh, set up for a Kirk Gibson finish. Yeah, you, you, know, you think of all the guys limping in. Willis Reed. Yeah, uh, he's got it way back in his stance, Johnny. This yeah. is that you know stinger that he tries to hit just low and with a little draw. And yeah, just, just can't we get through it? Can't get onto the left side. Yeah, he's going to have to improvise. You know, he's going to have to like maybe uh, just stay on his left side and not try to you know maybe just sort of punch it out there, stingers, or give it to old Roger Malpe who invented the name stinger, something like that. Right, back at 16, mediate on the tee, three iron in hand. Oh, Johnny, that one looked like it was starting a little left. And he's starting to get a little more. Yeah, a little negative. quicker. Oh. Yeah, a little quicker. Well, he just has to get lucky on the lie. Well, let's uh, look at the ball flight using our Pro Tracer technology. And I think we'll see this one start a little left. Just a big hook. Yeah. yeah. What's that? About a 30-foot hook? 40-foot yeah, at least. Yeah. Okay. Um, up to 18. Moment ago, Miguel Angel Jimenez, his third to the par five. You can see he's got 156. Make sure you hit a flush. Anything short, and even pin high, is going to come right back in the water. But that is a beauty by Jimenez. That might come back. Oh, it hung up. That's a good shot. He needs uh, a birdie right now after back-to-back -back bogeys. So now we're live with Westwood, the leader. And this is a scary little shot, Daddy. It's a scary shot, and it's a scary line he's chosen. Uh, a huge amount of break he's planted on the plane into this probably in the 25 to 30 feet area. It hasn't been breaking much if you put it in the slot, but maybe he's going to put it above the slot and work it off that almost off the fringe. He is. He's going to try to kill it and let it ride the fall line down. Oh, oh. But it's actually been going right down here. I think he's totally uh, wrong on it, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but <laughs> I think he's he might have found that fault line yeah. that Donnie's talking about. Yeah, he had the right idea. It's not the easiest part in the world, but he knew what he was doing. So Westwood, who at one point in his career reached the fourth ranking in the world way back in 2000, and then went through an incredible slump, which saw him plummet to 256 in the world. A lot of people wrote him off at that period, like he was done. You've seen it so many times from what has happened to David Duvall, the top ranked player in the world at one time. He hasn't been able to fight his way back. This would be an unbelievable hole that Westwood could dig out of if he's able to lift a trophy tomorrow. Back at 16, mediate second, tough bunker shot here. Johnny got to land it right on the down slope. It just keeps chasing up, but yeah. it's not a hard putt, but it uh, keeps going, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's just a. Wow, I didn't know it was going to trickle that far. Tough, tough position. Things. Okay, Miguel Angel Jimenez 
as we continue with our live primetime coverage out to the East Coast, quarter to 10 out there. Jimenez with a birdie chance here to post plus one. Quite a few people have been making this putt from above the hole. It just sort of seems to go in. That's why guys have been making it, but he played, he pushed it or played it out there. And I think uh, Lee Westwood probably sees that it's just a straight in putt. That probably helped him, but not the best round. At the moment, the ponytail, 74. ponytail Spaniard is four behind, but it might be more if Westwood can drop this one. It has been 38 years since an Englishman or any European has Do won this championship. Tony Jackson in 1970. Dottie sort of deserves a birdie here. You'd think he played it really well. A very gutsy tee, a tee shot and second shot. It, it certainly was. Before this, we go to 16. Mediate for par. Up the hill, turning left. I don't think it'll break that much. Wheels are coming off. Yeah, huh? they really are. That's four over par the last four holes, and it all started with the short miss at 13. Go back to 18. And this is Westwood to push it to three under. Pretty straight, Dottie, isn't it? It is. I think it is left center at the most, and it would be his third consecutive birdie here at the 18th. He should make this. If you watch cl closely, that stroke, he came down into impact, and he just curled the heel ahead of the toe. It's what happens when people are nervous and you see it all the time in major championships. That's the classic miss by a Turing pro. The toe stops. That could have given him a three shot lead, but coming back up to post two under. That was big for the guys that are contending mm -hmm. that miss. He deserved a birdie. So Westwood unable to get it down to two after playing that. Brilliant third shot down to the hole. Nevertheless, Westwood, who has won 27 times worldwide, 18 times on the European Tour, just one win in the United States, came back 10 years ago in New Orleans, the only player without a round over par thus far. 70, 71, and 70 for Westwood. So, Johnny, you mentioned earlier that he was playing the steadiest, and the numbers bear that out. The only player under par here at Torrey Pines. So USGA seems to be a genius at setting these courses up correctly for par being the scorer. Back out in the fairway, DJ Trahan left with 224. Big drive, huh? Huge drive. Right on a bare spot. Can't hit the green, but he, he plays that one. Come on, over. He he likes a cut. He Come plays on. a cut. He might be able to do it. Cheering it on. <laughs> yep, he let us off. Yeah, that down. will stop faster, and that might come back a little bit. But that's a good one. Nice shot, DJ. He's fired up. Nice to see that in him. First time he's ever made a cut in a major championship. He's right in it. And back at 17, Woods way off in the right rough, Roger. Well, and his ball had been picked up uh, while it was moving, so uh, has dropped the ball now. It has 188 yards left still to the hole. Cool. Shot that plays uphill, and he's going to have to play some kind of left to right shot here. There's a, a Torrey Pine that is up ahead of him on the right that uh, he's going to have to contend with. So this is going to be some kind of fade here. Can he land it on the green? Well, it's only on 11 paces. I mean, he potentially he can hit the ball and land it on the green. I just don't know if he can get it to stop or how quickly he can get it to stop. Get it home! And that, that, that's going to catch the bank and stay above the bunker, I believe, on the left-hand side. So Tiger Woods in a little bit of trouble at 17. He's two back. With Mediate, it's Lee Westwood who leads the U.S. Open. We'll be right back. It began with four professional golfers given four courtesy cars to drive to the Open. What followed was hardly surprising, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's meet a driver, Annika Sorenstam. 
focused, disciplined, and a tough competitor. It seemed appropriate she chose the 416 horsepower ISF. The kids have been wanting to go to the safari theme park since last summer. So we used our city cash returns card to buy the tickets and stuff. It was great to get close to the animals, but not that close. Luckily, we used the cash we got back to help pay for some body work. With your city cash returns card, earn unlimited cash back and get it mailed to you automatically. Whatever your story is, your city cash returns card can help you write it because city never sleeps. If you could change the way wireless companies did things, what would you do? I'm Dan Hesse, the new CEO of Sprint. Here's our idea. Use your phone for all the great things it can do without worrying about the meter running. How's that for a wireless revolution? Pretty awesome, huh? It's time to think about what Dad does when he doesn't have to do anything. It's time to remember where Dad goes when he doesn't have to go anywhere. Get him a gift card from the Home Depot. Available in-store or online. It's the ultimate Father's Day card. Good for the tool he's always wanted. Or the other tool he's always wanted. The Home Depot. Proud sponsor of Father's Day. I think I'm going to use my one iron. Even have a one iron? Just like Ben Hogan did. To make par and force a playoff at the 1950 US Open. Come on, who hits a one iron? Ben Hogan did. And me. Yeah, but you're no Ben Hogan. Not yet. At the USGA, we cherish golf's history. So come visit our museum to see the best golf memorabilia in the world. Good shot, kid. Including Hogan's one iron. I think I'm on. The USGA, for the good of the game. For 2,200 years, a great wall kept the world out. This summer, the world will be invited in. The Summer Olympic Games. Rocco Mediate had the lead most of the day in this U.S. Open Championship before Lee Westwood snatched it away. Tiger still lurking two back thanks to that eagle at 13 as this U.S. Open Championship rolls on in prime time approaching 10 o'clock out east. We continue with our live coverage here with Tiger at 17. Gary. And that very awkward stance here Roger and this can't help the left knee I wouldn't think. Yeah, he's going to have to put a lot of weight on his left hand side here and just fall on a very steep upslope. Not the worst of lies however. Well, you can't hit this just off the right foot. I've done it before with my bad knee. What the? Oh, you got to be kidding. Oh, he knows it, too. He got away with one there. It never looked like a birdie, I can uh, tell you that. It did not, and if this thing doesn't go down in the hole, Johnny, it's going to go eight or ten feet by. What the? Carries it much farther than he was trying to. Wow. Yeah, that hit up the flagstick and came back down on the first what down. The? Again, I asked the question, how does one guy <laughs> come up with so much of that? <laughs> It's just amazing. And one more look. Oh, obviously comes out much quicker than he expected. <laughs> Jeez, those stands just about got rocked down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> got to help him up the hill with that leg of his. Watch where it hits, folks. It hits short and climbs up the flag on the way down. Bingo! And down it goes. Well, if the kids weren't 
to bed at 9 o'clock Eastern time when about that eagle drop. They might be up after that war. <laughs> Two shot swing, Gary. Yeah, easily. Uh, Johnny, after the tee shot, you would have thought he could have made bogey. All right, let's join Jimmy Roberts. All right, Gary, thanks very much. Here with the only player left in the field under par, Lee Westwood. Uh, what are you, two under par, a 70 today. Uh, you were ill coming in. Did you surprise yourself a little bit? You said you didn't have much of a chance to even practice. Well, I wasn't really too surprised because I didn't have any expectations. You know, I haven't really hit any balls coming in here for the last couple of weeks. I did a little bit of practice, but I wasn't feeling so good. And it's sometimes easier to play golf when uh, you don't really expect too much. You will sleep on the lead, apparently, or at least uh, it appears that way, um, for the first time ever in your career. If not on the lead, perhaps tied for the lead. Will that change things for you? Uh, sleep on the lead, I should say, in a major championship. Change things at all for you? No, no, I'm a pretty good sleeper and uh, still got a bit of jet lag, so um, it's, it doesn't really figure in my mind too much. I'm just in a position where I've got a good chance of winning a major championship and a golf tournament. So that's the position I wanted to get myself into at the start, to, the start of today. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be nice going out last tomorrow and uh, having a chance. Quick correction, Tiger Woods now just one under par after the birdie. He'll join you under par in red numbers, or at least presumably so. Thanks. All the best of luck to you tomorrow, Lee. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you. So now a birdie at 18 for Tiger. Ties him for the lead, an eagle would give him the lead outright and he's getting closer to that position where he's won major championships from at least to share the lead. And this is a tough read here because there's a piece of this putt that actually likes to go right. There's that right I was talking about. This for Eagle for Trahan. It's almost impossible to read that. You think it's going to go left. It does go left the first couple feet but then it goes right. U.S. Amateur Public Links champion Trey back at 2000 now back on the tee. But can he hit it where he's aiming? Now he hit a pretty good drive if you remember at 15 when it really hurt his leg. But he has not hit a fairway since the 10th hole. And uh, he has hit it in a lot of yellow grass where people have been walking. And he's trying to figure out right now I believe in that nine shot game that he plays on the practice tee he's got to figure out something that might work considering his left leg is not working I would think it's some kind of going low fade if he could do it and you can see he's just going through his repertoire what will work here so this is really improvising and using his head uh, he needs to get a pretty long hit he has been hitting it over 320 yards with that leg so I don't feel too sorry for him as far as power. But uh, can he hit it inside the confines? He needs that to go for this green. So let's watch that leg here. No doubt gathering himself. Yeah, I think there's uh, something going on. Well, he just uh, kind of put his left leg back there. So yeah. He's yeah. Noise from the grandstand at 17 from play behind. Yeah, let's see this leg, Roger. What do you think he's going to hit here? I think he's got to hit some kind of cut, John. I think so. Got to hang on and try to hit a hard cut if he can. Oh, that's just what he's done. Yeah, that was the shot I thought. Aim at those uh, eucalyptus and play that shot he hits. You know, the shot he hits at number six, Roger, that he's done so well with. You know, we mentioned, uh, you know, Kirk Gibson and Willis Reed earlier. This this is beyond that. I mean, this is a guy that over four days has to try and get this done. I mean, this is a grueling walk on a grueling golf course. Well, Danny, let's use our NBC at technology and we will zero in right on that left knee and watch and see what happens on this swing. Johnny, do you think by playing the cut, it takes a little of the stress off? I just think that's the shot he's been hitting. Uh, and so he, he hit it so well on six every day with that cut around the eucalyptus. That seems to be the one that he's pulling off with the best uh, results. And he did it. All right, back at 17. This just a moment ago. Rocco Mediate from 164 yards. Seven iron up the hill. Trying to bring it in from the right as he usually does. And Johnny, this should catch that little slope. Yeah, he needs to stop the bleeding. It's four over the last four. Yeah, well, a good shot there and a makeable putt for birdie. Yeah, he could get under par with that putt, so he's surely not out of it. Maybe he's gotten the bad stuff out of his system. Head 18. Trey Hand to get to even within two of Westwood. Don't play at right edge. Oh. Wow. There's a 
lot of people here and a lot of pressure. That last putt every day, especially on the weekend, starts really being difficult. You don't want to leave yourself those downhillers, but I um, guess that will put him this for plus one. Yeah, it's too bad he didn't make that. A round of 73 for DJ Trahan, so new to this kind of environment, and that ball just goes right back into the water. He doesn't want anything to do with that anymore. It's back to 17. And mediate for birdie. This one very makeable, Gary. Right to left. Yes, Rocco. There you go. No way to come back. Get your mojo back, yeah, Rocco. There's that smile again. Yeah, he really has played well, John. He's hit 14 of 17 greens, and you know, it's just the ones he's missed. He's really struggled on. Yeah, that's when he saw Eagle, the Eagle by Tiger. I think it shook him up a little bit for a while. And let's take another look. Not an easy putt to make, really. No, a little bit of right to left break, and anybody that plays the ball right to left, that's you know you see that so much easier. Well, he'll go to 18 at one under par and now we have three guys under uh, par Gary. Well, we do indeed how quickly it changes in a U.S. Open Johnny. Yeah it usually goes the other way. Yeah, but. Well <laughs> but nice setup here it gives guys a chance to make some birdies coming in. Yeah it is. I like this 18th hole. A lot of things can happen. A guy can make eagle and he can make uh, easily a bogey with that shaved bank. So that's I think a good setup by the USGA. I really do. Tiger taking a little different kind of stroll. Down Torrey Pines this week. Golf course where he's won six times, four straight. And the PGA Tour stops Buick Invitational. 90 minutes or so away from his hometown of Cypress, California. Where his father Earl drilled into him at the early age all of the great instincts that we've come to know and realize and perhaps what will be the greatest champion in the history of this game before his uh, career is out 18 major championships for Jack Nicholas and Tiger in search of uh, number 14 here Johnny and I have to say on this Saturday uh, we've seen as much magic from Tiger in a single day as we've seen ever this has been unbelievable those two shots I know the hockey mentality and the football mentality is they can't believe golfers are worrying about a guy that's hurting but I think Tiger Woods right now is hurting Hugely, I think he's having to suck it up here and uh, to be able to play this next shot. He's going to go for the green. You see a lot of deep breathing by him that he is really having to pull it all together. And if this was not a major championship, I think he probably would have to go home right now after this round. I really believe that he is in that. He's thinking, you know, as a career and I think he's figuring, you know, this leg is getting worse every day. All right, playing with Robert Carlson. And Carlson comes in here at plus three. He is plus five on his round. Carlson began the day one back of Appleby. Taking dead aim. Yeah, 231 to the hole. Actually, he's done a pretty good job. There was a time there I thought he was going to go for a lot higher score than he is, John. He's kind of turned around. This is a big hole for him. How's it look, Roger? Uh, he's hit it very solid and right at the hole. Boy, what a beautiful shot. You're right about Carlson turning it around, Roger. He is one under golf since the 11th hole on the backside here. So for the past seven holes, one under. He's still in the championship. But, Roger, this is a good shot for that cut. I, I, if I was this caddy as Steve Williams, I'd say aim just inside that bunker, the left edge of the green, and just peel a cut into that middle of that green. He's got 226 to the hole, got the five wood out, and I, I think it's a lot of club. Uh, yeah, it is, but I agree. I think he's going to hit the moon ball, try to just hit a big old cut, and if it lands right of the hole on the right side of the green, wherever, that's fine. He's doing a lot of talking to himself right now. He's looking left for the cut. Hit it way up in the air, and the ball is cutting right of the hole. It's almost like he doesn't really get a great chance to enjoy it. He just looks down and grimaces after another swing. 
Johnny you've watched a lot of championship golf in major championship history as Tiger's ball continues to roll back again cheered by this crowd have you ever seen anything quite like this it's just been an amazing round having to deal with the knee and the fact that he made the unbelievable eagle and then the chip in that got a little lucky on the last hole climbing up down the flag stick it's just uh, it's almost surreal you're right watch this he is in major pain here I'm telling you watch after he hits it he's just almost like he's watching it here and now the pain sets in like oh man it is tough it's almost like makes you sick to your stomach when you get you're hurt feeling like that it's tough enough to win this championship and pull off shots but to know that you're going to get a shot of pain like that every time you you lay into a swing yeah, it's a lot of torque on the leg there. I know other sportsmen probably don't realize it, but I almost believe that you get as many injuries in golf as almost any sport with the wrist, the elbow, the shoulders, the knees, the back. There's a lot of injuries. I, you name them, I've had them all. Well, Tiger enjoys the walk to the last. Two usually, great usually as a winner, he's going to enjoy getting off of this golf course and getting that leg up and iced. He's sort of a little like the horse going back to the barn right now. Well, he's got a little more work to do, but those are two great shots. Improvising, like Roger said, uh, that's the shot. If, like I said, if I was Steve Williams, I'd say hit the cut. And he did both of those with a big cut. Let's listen how this crowd appreciates what he's done today. I think they're going to let him know. in the grandstands behind 18 for Tiger Woods who's on in two will have an eagle putt to take the lead and again all 13 of his major championships have come with at least a share of the lead after 54 holes back on the tee at 18. That was a good swing by Rocco good balance you didn't even have to watch it it was so perfect. Oh, oh, well, maybe it's not because I thought. a little left. Yeah, it's a layup there. Bounce there. He didn't seem to be too worried about it, though, did he? And All right, Carlson, uh, we'll take a look at this scorecard. The rough start began the day one behind Appleby. Started off with a bogey at the first, doubled the third. And then had another double bogey at the sixth. Bogey the eighth out 41 and he's played uh, one under golf since. And there's that scorecard we we're talking about 41 on the front nine playing with it's tough playing with Tiger. It's even tougher at the open playing with Tiger and especially when you get off to a bad start and to be able to turn this thing around like he's done. He's in the championship. He shoots 67 tomorrow. He's going to might have a good chance to bring that trophy home. Sweden has never had a male win a major championship. Although Carlson is the winningest Swede on the European Tour with seven wins. Good looking player. This is sort of a hard putt to read, folks. Once it gets across the ridge, right about there, though, one thing for sure, it's fast. Yeah, and then it, I think, kicked left pretty good. It comes back. a great read it goes left but why guys miss that is it comes back to the right at the end. Tiger would have learned something there. Birdie for Carlson third round 75 plus two back out just off the fairway Rocco's laying up Mark. Yeah just barely into that primary but no chance to go for the green. 
best angle would be down the right side if he can do it. Needs a good bounce here. Oh. That's not a very good layup, Jenny. The only thing good is he doesn't have to worry about it backing up in the water if he carries, you know, the lake. If he carries it on the green, it's not going to spin back, which maybe is good. Okay, the murmurs now around 18 as Tiger does his 18th hole prowl here in search of. Is it too much to ask one more eagle? Where are you, Roger? Right behind the green here, John. And uh, this ball is right on the precipice of the ridge. So it's going to be moving downhill. If that ball had come back just another few inches, it would have gone back almost all the way to the hole. But this very quick now, and I think uh, we'll move a little bit left to right coming down here. His practice stroke is he's aiming way left. Do you see that, Roger? And he's looking way left, like two and a half feet. Championships. What a great read and a great stroke. Roger, I know you can't hear one darn thing, but that's that's something else to figure that break out. That thing broke three, four feet right. Birdie at 17. Got away with that one, but this was absolutely perfect. Get the knee up on ice, Tiger. Look at this. You've got another 54 hole lead in a major championship, and I don't think he's attained that kind of position quite like he did today. This has been <laughs> absolutely remarkable. From above. He just throws away out to the left, hits the fall line right here, starts flattening out, and it's hard. He was five shots back with six, six holes ago. Gives him a nice little low key high five. Nothing low key about this day. Third Eagle of the championship. He had only two in his 13 previous U.S. Opens. All right, final group on the course. Rocco Mediate with his third, Mark. 112 yards. He just said it's playing 120, so he definitely wants to carry it just up to the hole or a little past it. Won't get much spin, I don't think. Shot. Okay, we're going to take a short break from Tory Pines. Tiger Woods at three under with another Eagle. Third round 70 in position for his third U.S. Open title. Beyond description. It began with four professional golfers given four Lexus courtesy cars. Annika Sorenstam in an ISF. Charles Hall III in a GS Hybrid. Chi Chi Rodriguez in an LX570. <laughs> and Raymond Floyd in an LS460. Take the right, right here. What followed was hardly surprising. It's a lot of wind today. Yes, there is. Greens fees at Torrey Pines, $240.
Gotta clear the hazard. Lesson after lesson after lesson, $55 an hour. Cleveland Loft Wedge, $110. Remembering to have fun while you play, priceless. Nice. For conquering the course, there's credit or debit MasterCard. Get into the game at Priceless.com. What makes a man with shoulder pain like mine get back on the court and still move like a pro? I moved on up to a lead. And what do you know? I got my jump shot back. <laughs> Just move on. Only Aleve has the strength to let you move on up to all-day pain relief with just two pills. Just move on up. In fact, I got all my good moves back. Just move on up. Move on up to Aleve. Are you? Yeah, in about 15 years. I just want to commend you for sitting and coach. Why? Well, you're saving, but you still need some financial advice. We need a plan to help protect and grow our money throughout our life. Retirement isn't the finish line. Where are you going? Back to first class. We can afford it now. Get to know your future self with Lincoln Financial Group at lincolnfinancial.com. Well, it would only be appropriate that we have a stunning California sunset, 10:15 out on the East Coast. And a stunner of a day for Tiger Woods in the clubhouse. One better at the moment than Rocco Mediate, who has a birdie try here to try to join Lee Westwood, one behind, going into the final round. And Dan uh, Rocco just came over to me and said, what is going on <laughs> out here? How did you, loud did you fill has it been? In, Mark? It's been so loud, but of course, being behind, Rocco has had to watch every one of these things go in. It's interesting, too. He said to me, will this putt get me in the final pair with Tiger tomorrow? Nope. And I said, nope. It's going to be Westwood and Tiger, because Westwood posted that two under first, if Rocco even makes this putt. But the last time that Rocco Mediate was in contention on Sunday in a major, the 2006 Masters, remember that? When he was in a tie for the lead on that front nine and was just two off the lead on the 12th tee when he put three balls in Ray's Creek, wound up making a 10, but here he is. This would be a very good up and in from where he was in two. If you can read this correctly, uh, it might have a tendency, if anything, to go slightly right, Mark. Uh, pretty straight. You can make it straight, I think, but the, probably the perfect read is left center. Is that what you're seeing? I see it left center, Johnny. Just for a birdie birdie finish. Got it outside the hole. It doesn't do that. You can make it all day probably straight in, but perfect read left center and soft. So that was a little disappointing there. He's been good all day. He's had a few ups and downs, but he's striking it really well and putting up a great fight. Meanwhile, Appleby was just plagued by putting woes from the get go out 41. He's played plus three golf on this back nine. He was remember the 36 hole leader by one over Rocco and Tiger and Robert Carlson. It has been like a snowball going downhill because he just could not stop it. Once he missed that little putt over there at number five and then missed a second little putt there. Nine over par today, Mark. That's an ouch. That kind of day for Appleby, 79. But a birdie at the last. Yeah, that's not good. Final stroke of this incredible third round Saturday at the U.S. Open. Rocco Mediate will be two behind Tiger with his plus one round of 72 today. That's good scoring for three straight days by Rocco. He's uh, really got to be proud of himself. Mentioned that. Tiger record in major championships perfect when he has at least a share of the 54 hole lead in majors. And with that one shot lead. Tiger is with Roger Malpe. Thank you Dan. Uh, 
Tiger, I've had the good fortune to see you do a lot of stuff, but the backside today was pretty special. <laughs> a couple of eagles and a hole out. Can you tell, take us through the eagle first at 13? Oh, 13, I, yeah, I wanted that angle, so I hit it uh, almost on 12 fairway, which was nice. <laughs> nice play. Yeah, nice play. Yeah, um, yeah then I hit a five iron, actually. Uh, it came out a little, little warm, but I uh, just wanted to make sure I tried to get in the back bunker, but it actually held, which was great. Uh, and the putt, I was just trying to lag it down there inside three feet somehow, and it, uh, it went in. Okay. <laughs> you know, well, nobody had gotten that putt high enough, so you're the first person that really read the putt properly. Now 17. You drive it right again. Second shot, grass slope above the bunker. What happened? Well, that, that little pitch shot came out a little warm. <laughs> I wasn't trying to hit it that far, what? and uh, it was just pure luck, man. When it, when it goes on one hop like that, uh, that's just pure luck. Now 18, it looked like on a tee that you were just trying to figure out how can I hit something down there in the fairway. Yeah, and it looked much. like Yeah, it looks like you're rehearsing. I'm going to hit some kind of cut and see if I can get it down there in the fairway, which it did. Mm -hmm. Take us through the rest of the hole. Yeah, pretty much played kind of a duck slice out there in the fairway. Um, started left a left bunker and kind of sliced it back in there. And I had uh, had a five wood in there, I had a 227 hole, and decided to hit the same shot. And um, I was practicing on the range actually earlier today for number number uh, 16. Uh, at the time, the wind was kind of more off off the west, and I didn't think I could get three iron there. So we were rehearsing a little five woods, and this was exactly the same shot I was rehearsing. So uh, hit it up on the green and uh, made a bomb. And and the putt coming down the hill, big break. Yeah, it was. You know, after I saw saw Robert's putt break quite a bit at the end, at the, um, coming down there. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna get a little bit more of an angle where I got to sit out a little bit more and. Uh, I probably wouldn't have made my putt unless I had seen his putt first. We have to ask you about the knee. I know it's a subject you really haven't wanted to talk about much this week, but obviously uh, we could see a grimace on some swings. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, is there a particular kind of shot that it bothers you on most? And two, is it getting worse day by day? A uh, particular shot? No. Just um, whenever it decides to, you know, to act up. And is it getting worse? Yes, it is. Dan, back to you. Thanks for playing, pal. <laughs> well, you got to wonder how it's going to be in the final round with uh, all the chips on the table, so to speak. But uh, this guy performs when the heat is on the most. And Tiger Woods has the one-shot lead heading into uh, the final round. We mentioned the perfect record with at least a share of the lead through 54 holes of major championships. And don't forget what Tiger has done with the lead in his, his career worldwide, 54-3. and three. So... The chances of him closing the deal out here uh, tomorrow, Johnny, are very, very good. You just got to wonder how much this knee can take. It's gotten progressively worse each and every round. Well, the guy's a human highlight reel, let's face it. I mean, the stuff he did today was like you take a whole career and you try to put it into three shots, and he just did it uh, under pressure. So whether, whether he can play well enough tomorrow uh, remains to be seen. Uh, if it is getting worse... He's, he might have to gut it. He might be seeing a bunch of those big cuts tomorrow because that's the shot I sort of thought he would hit at 7 uh, on 18. Remember I said I think the yep. shot is that big old cut, and uh, maybe he's just going to milk that cut for all it's worth tomorrow. He's still hitting the ball nine miles, but it's painful. So uh, it's going to be a lot of work tomorrow. He's never been in this much pain to win a major championship. We'll see what happens. Yep, this is going to be a different kind of feeling from any championship that he's ever put away previously. Tiger, of course, will be in that final group with Westwood. Here is a look at uh, some of those pairings down the stretch. It'll be Robert Allenby at plus two with Camilo Bijegas. And then after them, it'll be DJ Trahan and Hunter Mahan, a couple of those young American guns. Trahan at plus one. Rocco Mediate trying to become the oldest champion in the history of the U.S. Open will be with Jeff Ogilvy, who got it done a couple of years ago at Wingfoot. And there is the final pair. Tiger Woods with a one shot lead over Lee Westwood. And let's check in uh, with Mark Rolfing now. Mark. All right, Rocco, describe what the last four and a half hours of your life have been oh like. Oh, my God, it was it was as much fun as you could ever have. I, I played some of the best golf I've ever played and had made a couple little mistakes and but it was great. It was great to finish, and, and Nutto up there did all that crazy stuff in front of us. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was so much fun. I can't wait till tomorrow to see what happens. Can you beat him tomorrow? Who knows? Now, who knows what can happen? But it's, the way I'm striking it, you never know. I just got to make a few more putts. Congratulations on a fabulous Thanks. day. Thanks. It was a blast. Cool. Yeah, it turned into a blast at the end for Rocco, finishing uh, with a birdie. He had a good chance to finish birdie birdie, but uh, he'll take it at the age of uh, 45. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's hard to say what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, historically, Tiger's got it wrapped up, but with the knee, there's a big question there. All right, some of these plus two numbers, Johnny, anybody strike you? Ernie Els is uh, 
a full, uh, he's three under par, I mean, three plus three. I mean, he's got some work to do if he's going to make a run tomorrow. Well, you know, I just, uh, Lee Westwood is the guy. I said that uh, early two or three times. He is the guy Tiger has got to be tomorrow, I believe. Okay, we'll see how it all ends up. And uh, Bob, I'm sure you've enjoyed this as much as we have. Back to you. Yeah, I sure did. And I wish I could offer some sort of diverging opinion or original thought. But the lingering impressions from today's third round involve Tiger Woods, as they so often do. First, his nearly unfathomable eagle putt from some 65 feet on 13. Then his chip for birdie on 17, a one-hop slam dunk that was so ridiculous, even Tiger couldn't help but laugh. And then for good measure, measure another eagle to close on 18 and seize the lead. All of this while often grimacing through the pain of his still healing left knee. A performance that exhausts superlatives and leaves him now 18 holes from his 14th major championship. Reason enough, I would think, for all of you to rejoin us tomorrow. And now for a full wrap-up of the day's events at the U.S. Open, watch the Lexus U.S. Open wrap-up live on NBCSports.com. Tomorrow at 2 Eastern, you can watch well-known golf enthusiasts like Matt Lauer, Tony Romo and Justin Timberlake challenge golf's toughest test as they try to break 100 here at Torrey Pines. It's the Golf Digest U.S. Open Challenge right before tomorrow's final round. And we'll be back here tomorrow at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, for final round coverage of the U.S. Open Championship. Coming up next on NBC, it's Law & Order. Now for our entire NBC Sports golf team, I'm Bob Costas saying so long from Torrey Pines Golf Course. And we'll see you tomorrow, everybody.